and welcome to this SEC webinar on learning spaces. Today we will have two speakers, Massimo Pelladinelli from Italy and Citalia Marquez from Portugal. I hope I didn't say it horribly wrong your names and uh, I'm sure you can also introduce yourselves and present who you are, where you come from and a bit of your background on the topic. So today we really focus on learning spaces, creating uh, creative classroom designs and also little bit of school designs, but I'm sure Massimo will uh, introduce this topic to you and uh, what we'll be talking about. If you have any questions, uh, please type them into the chat box and then we'll take them afterwards. And then uh, we switch to the other presentation in between. So welcome Massimo and welcome Sidalia and uh, we can start these uh, presentations. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you. Uh, it's a pleasure for us uh, and for me too. Uh, the, uh, the opportunity to discuss with you about uh, learning spaces. Every time we have to discuss, is an opportunity to to learn it and to understand and to increase uh, our our activity. Uh, we can divide. We share with you our experience. Uh, we are uh, in school district. We are in Umbria, in Italy, in the center of Italy. Uh, we work in two municipality, and our, in our directorate we have six primary school and six pre-primary school. Uh, um, our work uh, in the last time, in the last year, is uh, uh, around the architectural structure and focus it on, le on learning and we do our activity uh, using limited, limited resources. Uh, Sometimes we, we say uh, life is too short to complain. Uh, if, you, if you wait uh, to have uh, all the resources to start to go in every side, it's possible you never start. This is our idea. And uh, in this activity too, uh, uh, we use that uh, we want, we have in, in, in one moment uh, and we do what we, it is possible in this moment using that we want, that we have in this moment. Um, we have uh, some inspiration, very important inspiration. Uh, Maria Montessori write his methodology one century ago in our school and for this is very important for our work. Uh, Indire. Indire is very important for us. Indire is uh, the Italian uh, National Agency for the Research in School Innovation. And we have, uh, um, have, uh, have contact and work together with Radio Children and uh, other organizations in Italy to work around uh, learning spaces. Um, our work uh, is to uh, do uh, find a solution for normal schools, this uh, our work. And uh, uh, when the, we say normal school, uh, we say about the Italian schools. Uh, in these two tables, uh, you can see uh, what, are, what are our school in this time. If you see, uh, only one school in three school uh, was made in the last 25 years in, uh, in Italy. And our district too, uh, if I, I think uh, to the main school, uh, the, this school where uh, uh, I am now, uh, was made in three different times. The first time was uh, 1,000 years ago. The second uh, time was uh, five centuries ago, and the last time was three centuries ago. For this, uh, it's very war hard uh, to work uh, in, in this uh, situation, but, but, but it's possible. And uh, our experience, experience say that it's possible. Um, uh, the way the methodology is started from pedagogical vision, this is the most important thing. For example, our vision run to in two different ways. The first is autonomy and uh, responsibility. The second way is uh, cooperative learning. And the third way is uh, learning by doing. 
when we work uh, uh, around uh, spaces, uh, we start from the needs of our students to change and to organize. Uh, really, are, are possible. Uh, really, um, only sometime if we have the opportunity to have a new school. And for this, uh, normally we work, uh, take advantage uh, of building work, earthquake uh, improvement, for example, or energy e efficiency. Or another way is uh, reorganizing existing, uh, existing spaces and uh, furnishing. Normally, we start uh, from uh, some questions. Uh, the, the first question is, uh, do we use all the school spaces well? And the second, can we arrange the furniture we have differently? And the third, with micro, what micro intervention on space can we do alone? Starting from these questions, uh, in the time, in the last uh, five years, we change uh, a lot our schools. We start from this school, uh, San Pio School, uh, is a primary school, and uh, we uh, find uh, some opportunity uh, in, in some spaces that normally uh, we can use, <laughs> you, we can't use. For example, we have big corridor, uh, we have uh, holes that we use only one hour in a day uh, with a low level safety because normally the, the, the students uh, run so fast in the spaces, but it's possible to change the spaces. For example, uh, the spaces will be the, uh, some squares like this you see in the pictures. Uh, we can put some tables and uh, uh, it's possible in the space uh, develop social, social uh, skills because they will be social, social spaces. But in this, in the same areas is possible uh, organize uh, some spaces for individual study and large group activities. And, uh, for example, individual study is very important in our approach. In the old approach, we work only, only uh, classroom by classroom, uh, all the group together, all, all classroom group together. In new vision, uh, the students have time uh, to work uh, in individual approach. Uh, another opportunity we have in the spaces is, uh, have, uh, and is build uh, informal spaces, soft spaces. Uh, we have no money to, to put the, the, in the floor uh, wood. Uh, we like a lot the solution, but it's impossible for us. Uh, but we have some ideas and, for example, using a natural rubber, if possible, uh, build some, some corner with uh, the solution and have a new opportunity for our children that they love very much. Uh, our classroom change. Uh, in our classroom, there is not the teacher desk. Uh, there are not the student desk, <laughs> I think. I think uh, it's a very important change, this. Our idea is uh, cooperative learning, and uh, the table are cooperative tables. Uh, the center of the room is the media screen, is the, the, uh, this wall with this color, and we, in the center we have a, a whiteboard, an interactive whiteboard, where we flip the class and they work together, starting for teacher, but sometimes starting from students. Uh, another very important changing we do is uh, uh, build atelier. Uh, other, the other way uh, is uh, learning by doing. And for this, it's very important to have a special spaces where we organize uh, the, um, materials, materials to make experimentation, to make activities. For example, we have uh, the science atelier and the artistic atelier and other more. Uh, in these spaces, um, all is open and uh, the, the rule is uh, touch and try. Uh, normally when we go in a laboratory, uh, we say a lot uh, to our students, uh, don't touch, don't touch. 
Uh, in our uh, atelier, the rule is touch and try uh, because our idea is learning. by doing uh, to uh, do this changing in the school we uh, in the time we, we put uh, uh, some methodology and test some methodology uh, in this table you see something we start from the systematic approach this is very very important it's like a like a, a puzzle uh, you can in different time, different pieces, but uh, uh, we necessity to have uh, the idea, to have the vision about the future, about the solution, and in this way it's possible put the pieces in the right space, in the right size, uh, and go to, to uh, complete the puzzle. Uh, we overcome the physical spaces uh, restriction and uh, go to open and not, not to close. Uh, we create uh, living rooms with our work like at home. Normally it's different life of our students at school or at home. Uh, we want to have the same approach in school too. Uh, very important for, for us is the maintaining of the quality and the beauty of the public buildings in the time. And for this, we work around the active citizenship. Uh, very important is work with the staff. The teacher, the master alone uh, can do anything, can do nothing. Um, we work about the staff, we work with the staff uh, to share the, a new vision and to develop new ideas. Very important is the research for, for us in DIRE uh, first, but we work with uh, in, uh, international exchange and, and uh, we do visit in other schools. The students in the center is another important approach. Uh, seeing the students, we have a lot of new ideas uh, uh, um, and uh, we can uh, innovate and uh, put a new solution every day. Uh, in the uh, Italian system, it's very important to uh, work with the mayor and the municipality administration because they have the building. The building, uh, the schools are property of the municipality. Uh, we work to find uh, not ordinary, no not ordinary for fund. Uh, we do fundraising. For example, we have our budget, uh, our budget normally is uh, 400,000 euros, but every year, every year so normally we have uh, 2,000, uh, 200,000 euros more. Uh, uh, supervising uh, the schools uh, at not attend the final, uh, the finished time is uh, another important uh, approach. The last, but not the least, <laughs> is uh, the involved family. Uh, if you uh, don't involve the family when you start, uh, it's possible you have a lot of problem when you finish the activities and when you have the new school. Uh, using this systematic approach is possible to uh, innovate the organization model. In Italy, in the last 20 years, we have the opportunity to develop autonomy in the school and work uh, around the learning spaces. We have the opportunity to uh, flex, to, to will be more flexible, more flexible so in uh, time, school time for the students in the, the curricula. And we have uh, really uh, different opportunity for uh, every students in the schools. Uh, we have, uh, the last time, good out outcomes. Uh, I think they feel, the, the, the first is feel better at the school. And the learning by doing cooperative learning and uh, autonomous learning increased a lot. In our, uh, and we are very happy because this is our vision. And we develop a social experience that are very important uh, because increase uh, uh, restorative citizenship.
uh, we uh, make replication. We start from uh, from uh, San Pio School, a primary school, and then we change San Filippo School. San Filippo School is uh, in uh, in the center of the old town. It's a very hard site to change, a uh, very hard building to change. But we we change uh, in this in this side too uh, with uh, a very very good solution. Uh, we do this with uh, no money, <laughs> but in this uh, process, very important are the parents uh, and all the the people of the school. Me too, uh, use the hand to to do something and to change. We organize some days, uh, uh, some uh, citizens' days. The name of this is uh, La Mia Scuola Bella, my beautiful school, and uh, all the community work together to to change, to innovate, and to uh, uh, do better our schools. The third school we change is the Promano School in the south, south side of our municipality. And then uh, this year, in September, we open, reopen uh, two our other schools in the mountain. We have a municipality in the mountain, two, two small schools, 21 students in, pri in primary and fifth, cl uh, fifth class, fifth, fifth years, and uh, uh, a pre-primary school with 25 students, children. And we change all. Uh, using the same methodology uh, and, uh, and other school out of uh, our uh, district uh, use the same methodology we share we can divide we support and we work together and um, we have two other schools that uh, changed the system last year very important for us uh, is uh, um, our scientific committee, uh, because uh, we are artisan of, of innovation, but the artisan necessity to to con divide the vision with uh, research to see if the way uh, we run are the ways we run uh, are correct. Uh, Avanguardia Educative is a, an indirect project, very important for, for us, another way to support the schools to innovative uh, ways. And uh, we, uh, last year, start, uh, uh, we, we build a network, EduArc is the name of this network. Uh, every, every week arrive a new school in the network to work together and to develop uh, this solution for the wellness uh, of our students and to, for the learning approach, uh, for a better learning approach of our students. The last time we work around the microclimate, uh, for example, uh, putting this uh, square, these uh, materials in the classroom or in the spaces, we decrease, decrease 20 decibel uh, the level of uh, the sound, the acoustic uh, uh, in the in the spaces, and uh, the life will be better for for our students. Okay, thank you so much. Um, any other questions? Uh, I thank you very much for your attention the, and uh, for the opportunity to discuss okay. uh, with you. And I am here for this, some not everyone has questions. The time or the effort time to or the resources to do such things. But the presentation gives ideas. Resources is a big problem. Uh, uh, really, uh, in this time, we have uh, some new opportunities because uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Bay Fund, uh, some funds from uh, Europe. Uh, we have uh, uh, our uh, municipality have uh, more money than uh, some years ago, but uh, uh, it's possible they rebuild some schools like the old schools. 
uh, if uh, they don't work with uh, with the schools with, with us uh, to share a new vision and uh, a new approach to to do new schools and uh, then the municipality normally uh, put the building but not put the furnitures for this we we have a staff that work every day to fundraising uh, for example, we have a lot, uh, for example, we have uh, some opportunities for Erasmus and Plus so project and uh, for PON uh, that uh, are in Italy important important fundraising in this time. Says, um, they don't have open minds at the level of decision makers and the question is, What's the most persuasive argument for these decision makers who don't see the value that the teachers see? Uh, when, when we change uh, some systems, um, uh, very important is the, the communication, uh, very important is sharing with all uh, the actors of the territory, of the gay community. Uh, in every system, normally the innovators are from 2 to 3% three, three to 6%. And uh, uh, we necessity to divide the vision, new vision uh, with the other uh, teachers in the schools and then uh, speak uh, a lot with uh, the family because uh, the idea of school that uh, have the family is the school they, they, uh, they, they make, they have when they uh, go to school a lot of time ago. Um, we uh, must uh, uh, explain the vision, introduce it to, to the change, to, do, to, to the new needs that have the students today and speak together. Uh, when we start with the first school in San Pio, we uh, organize a, a Comitato di Gestione, is a, a council, a special council, council, project council with the, the parents, with the family. And before to go uh, to, to, to speak to, uh, with the municipality, we speak with the parents about the idea, about the future, about, about the new opportunity, and then we work with the municipality. Uh, and uh, never finish uh, this communication lot, activity. We necessity uh, speak about the vision, about the future, so every the, day with the, all the family and the every day if, with the, the all the teachers in the school. Also the decision maker, so somehow combine all these passions for um, innovating the schools and the learning spaces and communication very important and keep the communication open with all these parts. Um, if there are no other questions, we move on to the next presentation by Vidalia who will provide some uh, examples and um, perspectives on the school level. And if you have any other questions, you can still type them into the chat box and we will take them at the end of this webinar. So if uh, there's any anything that you feel like it's still you need to have an answer, so uh, no worries, you will definitely have a chance. So just a second, we'll um, have the next presentations here. Uh, maybe for the final before we move on is how do teachers organize in the new environment? Or should we take this question later? Um, Massimo, do you want to answer this one or do you want to take it at the end? Okay, yeah, we will take that at the end as well. So we will keep this question and now we move on to the next presentation by Sidalia. Hello and welcome. And uh, you can start your presentation and perhaps you could introduce yourself. Uh, we cannot uh, hear you at the moment. At the end, I think. Now we should be able to hear you. Hello, can you hear us? Uh, we cannot hear you at the moment. 
Can you make sure that you're all plugged in there? No, not yet. No, we cannot hear you. Can you hear us? I don't know what happened there. Um, we just heard you a moment ago. Perhaps you can um, exit the room and come back again. Maybe that will help. Yeah, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. So perhaps if you exit the room, uh, now you, yeah, now you mute again. And now we cannot hear you. Uh, so perhaps you can exit and enter the room. So perhaps you can exit and enter the room. Okay. Now I hear you. Don't go. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. I just started to hear her. Now. She, okay. But meanwhile, while we wait for um, Sidalia to come back again, perhaps uh, Massimo, if you want to uh, elaborate a bit, like about teachers organizing the new environment. It's a bit vague question, but. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, if you have something to say. Um, uh, really, is uh, I think we we found a lot uh, of uh, energy when uh, to 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 improve more. We. We, in our work, because really our students so feel we feel better in the school, and uh, we discovery that uh, uh, a lot of innovation came from the the, the um, work we do around the learning spaces. Uh, we think uh, is uh, like uh, um, a, a top, uh, like a flu when we we put the other innovation and. Uh, uh, the 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 um, uh, motivation come from for the teacher when we work uh, to this uh, to this way, and uh, some solution come uh, because uh, so something is changing in the school. Okay, thanks a lot. So now we have back. Uh... Are you hearing me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, okay. <laughs> yes. Let's see. So great when we hear you. Uh, it might not be so great because we have a huge storm here, and I think is interfering with the connection. Okay, so I think uh, we can move on and start with your presentation okay. and the examples from your. Let's see if we can pass the message. So, I'm Sidalia. I'm a primary teacher. Uh, now I'm a headmaster deputy and I teach coding and robotics from uh, 3 to 15 year old students. I'm going to show you my school. This is the main school. We are a cluster of uh, um, a cluster of uh, six schools. You can see we are in the center of the country, very near Lisbon. It's a place, a good place to live. And these are the other schools. Uh, three of them uh, are only for primary and kindergarten. This one, Nina dos Padanal, Poeta Rubelo and a Ceiceira. The other two are prisons, where we also have some classes uh, according to the needs of the, the students there. Are you still listening to me? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. All good. Uh, it's um, not not very okay. clearly. So if you can speak uh, 
Do you have any headsets or if you can somehow uh, be closer to the microphone? Every time I, I put the headset, I, I go out of sound. Okay, no problem. So if you just speak close to the microphone, you... Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll try to be close. Um, so our our school had uh, big problems. Our students a few years ago had low grades, behavior problems. We had unmotivated teachers. Uh, the school building was uh, in bad conditions. We had pre big problems in management. One of the the, the headmasters had to go because the, the ministry said so. And the parents didn't want their students in our school. So we started some changes, uh, step by step, using first European and Ministry of Education, Portuguese Ministry of Education projects, uh, some teacher training, and methodology changes, and uh, step by step we started to be a different school. Um, about 2006, um, we accelerate this process, and in 2015, we found out about learning labs. I went to the UN, I saw some of the, the rooms that were made in our school, and thought it would be a good project, and uh, told my headmaster that uh, thought I was right, and we started to uh, build our first learning lab. It was called Active Lab as the, the project. We aim to um, do three things at the same time. Uh, change the space, the methodology, and add some resources. But at the time, we didn't have so much money to do it. So uh, we use everyone uh, available, the teachers, the, the staff, and the students help uh, to build our first um, active lab based on FCL ideas. So uh, it was a movement of uh, changing everything. The way the teachers teach, the way the students behave in the classes, the parents gave some ideas to, and we had some partners. Uh, two foundations from Portugal, Fundação Carlos Gulbenkian and Fundação PT, and we could um, improve our first learning lab. We did some changes in curriculum design, we did the, um, we, we started with PBL, integrating learning scenarios, learning paths, changed some things in, in regulation and feedback, and also at the same time we did school assemblies, where we worked on values and emotions and also on the changes that we were making in our classes. This is our first space where we um, did all the, the activities that used active learning. Uh, because I'm a robotics teacher now, this is normally my space, and we use pair, pair, um, projects and group projects so they uh, learn how to manipulate, to explore, to build, to transform, to relate, uh, to learn, of course, in another way, using tangibility. You can see here some of the kids working in groups, communicating her, their ideas, this is our first learning environment. But it was not enough because all the, the teachers wanted to use that space. So 
our project evolved and we started to use different spaces according to the needs of the project. Here is Cooking Lab where we do science and also vocational uh, learning. We also have a media lab where they use media uh, applications to learn. We have a fab lab, a music lab, a multisensorial lab, a green lab, a green garden lab and a parkour lab for different subjects. And the most recent is Drama Lab, where, where we um, do some uh, art and drama activities, theater mainly. One of the, the, the most important thing we did was to involve the students in assemblies. If we don't hear the people involved in all the school, we can't gain them to our project and what, this was a big, a big choice of the school. They also run in informal learning spaces. Our municipality helps us in many ways uh, and so we also uh, go with the children to their learning labs, they also have some, and the clubs are also um, a place to learn. So everywhere we send the kids, it's a learning lab in our school now. Thank you for listening to me. I hope the message passed. Yeah. Hello, thank you. Thanks a lot. These are my contacts. Past. Any questions here for Fidalia about her work in her school? The, um, before, if I can just go back to Massimo's presentation, there was one question that was left unanswered, so now we just go quickly back. And meanwhile, please type your questions for Fidalia. So the question I have uh, uh, for Massimo is, was this inspired by kindergarten classrooms? And uh, like he, ha uh, I have seen that in those. Yes. So, um, what there are activities in the schools? So, uh, was this inspired by kindergarten classrooms? Or um, sorry, sorry, just a second. Uh, you sorry, um, you can think so, but. But we we. Uh, we say building to the build. Uh, we have, we do, we see in our ki sixth uh, kindergarten a uh, good solution to organize the spaces. But when we change the order and uh, arrive in, in uh, primary school, we uh, not use the same system. It's a, a not a good way. It's a bad way. For example. Um, in uh, we use uh, to work around uh, the autonomy. We use uh, um, some boxes that uh, and at the end uh, every students have uh, one box. Uh, one students uh, haven't uh, one desk, but uh, one students have a box to put uh, uh, all the materials uh, uh, in it and. Uh, is a good way to work every day to the autonomous approach. Uh, this way we use uh, uh, in the uh, pre-primary school, but is a good uh, is good uh, use the same methodology in primary schools. We work a lot uh, to a continuous approach. Uh, for example, at the end of year, our teacher of primary school go in pre-primary schools to see the students and to see the work of students with the primary school teacher and uh, they understand something to build new activities uh, over the building, over the students, over the richness that students have when they uh, arrive from primary to primary schools. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions for Sidalia? Or Massimo? So yes, Fidavia, sorry. 
if you have any um, insight on this kindergarten uh, aspect. Uh, in the kindergarten, you can say that some of the ideas come from the kindergarten, the way they use the different placings in the, in the classroom. Yes, they, they have a way of doing uh, stuff that help uh, children to to work um, in different projects, yes. But our main, um, main, our main way of doing things was based on FCL um, methodologies. Not in kindergarten, if, even if I see the similarities. Okay, thank you. So there's a, another question for you, Sidalia, uh, from Luz. Um, I see the changes were in all the school, which is good. But how about one classroom inside with handy items? With? With the handy items. Perhaps could you elaborate your question a little bit, Luz? Because um, the, yeah, so... Yeah, so uh, the question was, how about the one classroom inside with handy items? So if this uh, question can be elaborated a bit. And meanwhile, yes, uh, you will have the presentation on the event page afterwards. Don't worry about it. All will be available there. Um, and perhaps a question is while others are typing from me, do you think there's a what what do you think is the biggest difference between the age groups? So of course you have the kindergarten kids, but if you go even older post secondary, um are there some really major In our school we have different ways of approaching, even if the basis is the same. Because we we do this methodology from kindergarten to ninth grade, we don't have um, secondary after ninth grade. It's another school. So uh, in seventh, eighth and ninth grade they have um, discipline where they do uh, this kind of activities. Even if they do it in subjects, they have a space about two hours where students can elaborate more their projects. Okay, thank you. And here just to um, perhaps to repeat your school, is it only for primary students or do you have secondary students too? Can you hear me? Me or Martina? You, in your school, do you have uh, only primary students or do you also have secondary? If I just do to repeat what you said. No, we have the two, the two. We have uh, from kindergarten to, to secondary until ninth grade. We don't have sorry, those. I'm, um, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going back to the presentation from Massimo and the discussion we had afterwards about bringing the not just the teachers, I mean not just the parents of the students, but also the decision makers in the municipality to support these changes. So perhaps could you share your experiences? Did you have difficult time, perhaps with the teach, uh, with the um, maybe with your school or? the parents or with the municipality or your town with this so how did you uh, deal if you had any, if you had any problems how did you deal with them uh, a mayor uh, have a good life if uh, the 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 people uh, are, feel better um, it's important to share the vision with the municipality too and uh, share that uh, uh, will be we be have uh, uh, but have a better school in the future uh, come uh, and bring opportunity 
uh, for all the community. Uh, the the um, decision maker the, uh, in the municipality to know the school they have when they are at school. And for this, uh, we necessity to uh, share the vision with the municipality too. We work uh, uh, a lot around this. Uh, we, um, for example, in the uh, Italian system, we have a, a document, the, the, of the uh, curriculum, curriculum uh, autonomous of the school, and we uh, go to the municipality to explain the curricula and to speak about the future, and uh, to speak about the opportunity we bring uh, with our work, uh, and uh, we explain about uh, uh, the improve of our level we have if, if we change uh, the learning spaces. Uh, in this way, uh, we speak. Uh, uh, about the, the new buildings uh, the municipality can do, can uh, build in our uh, territory, uh, and we speak about new solutions. For example, we organize uh, every year uh, um, with uh, our uh, scientific committee two days work in the summer, and uh, in this in these two days we have. Uh, uh, the mayor and the, uh, our, the other uh, manager of the municipality with us, and we see uh, together the future, and uh, we speak about solution. We work a lot uh, with the Ufficio Tecnico, is the technical bureau of the municipality that works around the uh, school bu uh, buildings, and. Uh, uh, every week we speak about solution. For example, we work together uh, to have good solution for uh, uh, the pedagogic approach and uh, in the same time safety in the schools. Uh, we necessity to work together and to grow together, not only in the school but with the municipality too and, and with uh, the decision maker. Um, also, made the same question for Sidalia. Uh, do you have any experiences in working with municipalities in your country yes, and on these terms? On this, uh, yes, and it's uh, a good uh, relationship between school and municipality. Um, we have uh, our main organ in, in, in our school is. Uh, school assembly where they have a seat too. So they were uh, sharing with us all the steps of this project and learning how we were going to do the changes and also having their opinions uh, and helping us with some of the resources. Uh, mainly uh, changing the buildings. Uh, not with re equipment, now they do, but at the, at the first no, but now they, they, they have money for that. But firstly, we're changing the spaces. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, any other final questions for any of the speakers? before we close the session. So, of course, we share the material and the recording with you afterwards. But now, if you have any final thoughts, um, something you want to share, any last questions, we still have a few minutes to take them. <coughs> and perhaps you're all very inspired now to work on uh, the learning spaces in your school and in your classroom and take these uh, experiences, uh, examples, methodologies that were presented. I see you uh, that uh, our nectar network is open. Uh, if, you, if some schools like to work together, uh, work together is the 
uh, the better uh, way to 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 learn and to improve together. Uh, simply send an email, and it's possible to work together. Uh, uh, exchange, sharing the solution and uh, new, uh, and uh, make some project, uh, European project together in the future. Yes, so maybe perhaps you can uh, share also once again the details in the chat, or it will be in the slides. Because as, as uh, Hanaf mentions, how can we follow this in future? It will be um, good to keep this communication. I agree. It's great. So perhaps, um, Massimo, you can put the, some details into the chat box. So if there's any way to contact or have a network or even a project um, to make an Erasmus Plus project on learning spaces. Because um, I see there's a lot of expertise, but also a lot of interest. So it would be good to combine these. Yeah. Let's have you share these details there. And of course, uh, yeah, so here are your emails. And also, you will have them in the slides available for you afterwards. So if you, may, if you don't catch them now, it's OK. You will have them later as well. So it's a good way to keep this communication going on and follow up on this topic, because I believe one hour is not always enough. So any final questions, thoughts, comments? So I think uh, we can go ahead and let these ideas brew for a bit and uh, be very inspired. So from my side and uh, from School Education Gateway, yes, both excellent uh, excellent presentation, excellent questions and comments from you. Really, thanks a lot. So now here I have two links for you. So first is the feedback survey. I ask you to take it so we can uh, think of the future um, webinars. I will also put it here. And then also you have the link to download the certificate. And now um, you need to do this within 24 hours. And you need to be logged in into your Teacher Academy account. So you have to go and download it there yourself. So this is the way you can get it. And once again, many thanks uh, for this webinar on learning spaces. And you will find more materials and resources on School Education Gateway on this topic. So there are articles, there are survey results, there are um, practice examples. So you have find a lot of resources there. So thanks a lot again for this presentation. And thank you for joining um, another School Education Gateway's uh, Teacher Academy webinar. The next one we have is on the 10th of December. So that's a Tuesday on digital competence. So stay tuned for that. We'll be publishing the details soon. And meanwhile, I uh, really thank you a lot for Vidalia and Massimo for taking the time and to presenting, sorry, I will just, uh, yeah.